Blockchain in itself is an alternative way of storing data. About a year ago, he started mentioning like, yo, we should crypt, we should tokenize your work. And I really didn't know what that meant. NFTs, um, a terrible name for a wonderful concept. <laughs> Like you said, this is a wild west, man. This is the 21st century Jetson stuff that we, none of us know where this is going. You know what I mean? Once we tokenize said art, that art is now tokenized within the blockchain, which means it gives it a reference. It gives it an origin within the blockchain. Wait, what? You thought crypto was only for currency. Blockchain is that thing somewhere on the internet. NFT is yet another acronym you probably should know, but don't. And art can only be created and sold in the physical world, right? Let's step into the future. I'm the artist. I create these skulls made out of recycled tips from spray cans. And George is my ace photographer. We've been working together for years. When this uh, NFT crypto art thing surfaced, it was just a no-brainer basically for, for George and I to partner up and bring these images to the NFT world. Confused yet? You're probably thinking, what the heck is NFT crypto art? And why do they need the Ethereum blockchain for it? You may not even know what the blockchain is. We got you covered with an expert in the metaverse. I'm a veteran web designer, graphic designer uh, for the past 20 plus years. Along the ways, I've picked up a couple of skills that have helped me get to this point where we're actually uh, tokenizing real world assets and putting them on the blockchain. Once they, um, they purchase the actual piece online, that, that particular token, they actually have the rights to this actual token as well, this actual piece of art. Let's say Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they keep all their data within one server. So if there's malice intent, all they have to do is direct their malice to one server. Whereas with blockchain technology, that's not necessarily the case because that specific data is parsed around the world, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and now maybe millions of the same data being shared. And those computers, those servers are referenced as nodes. And basically that's what gives the value of blockchain. The data is kind of safe for this particular case. Now, uh, the blockchain itself, the database, uh, that, that word has grown to encompass more of a category of technologies that allow for this decentralized use of trust in what is recorded in the system. So unlike a database where one company is in charge and therefore they can control who gets to write, when they get to write onto this database, um, for example, Facebook is a database too, if you think about it. But the problem is it's a database that is controlled very, very strictly and who gets to access it and what they get to use it for is defined by their rules. A blockchain is a database where the rules are predefined and everybody who participates has to follow those rules, but uh, they can't change them to their whim, uh, nor can they be kicked off the system. So there's different types of blockchains and tokens. The first crypto tokens were designed to be fungible. That is, each Bitcoin is identical. And the system was designed for these tokens to be interchangeable and to hold the same unit of value. Still with me? Great. Now let's apply that to collectibles. What makes a traditional collectible like an autograph so valuable? It's unique and authentic. So using blockchain, we can now ensure that digital collectibles are legit. They can't be divided or forged. They are unique. 
It's called non-fungible tokens or NFTs for short. But basically what you need to remember is that thanks to the blockchain and its decentralized technology, the sale and movement of these NFTs can be traced, verified and recorded on a permanent ledger. So there can only ever be one owner of an NFT at any one time. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are, can be an array of products, really. Art is one good example of it. So basically what we're doing is we're documenting a 1930s uh, Art Deco heirloom by Charles Schneider. Um, what I'm doing is taking high resolution photo of it, where later we're gonna go ahead and take a 3D photo of it. We're gonna go ahead and kind of rotate it and give it its own kind of atmosphere where we're gonna go ahead and tokenize it and put it up on the blockchain as a real world asset. The idea of a whole generation of people are very, very comfortable with uh, a very online existence that involves uh, blurring the line between the physical and the virtual, the tangible and the intangible, and no longer accepting some more traditional groups and say, this is real, but the game environment then isn't. This house has real value, but the castle you spent four years building in Minecraft is worthless. And there's a whole generation that doesn't see these distinctions anymore for good reason. Um, the house you spent four years building in Minecraft isn't worthless. About six months ago, I started seeing uh, Nifty Gateway and Super Rare. Some artists that I knew and that I know start releasing stuff. And I realized, like, okay, I gotta get on this. The most notable NFT or crypto artist in the world right now is Beeple. He's a prolific digital artist who has completely caught fire. Just a few months ago, he did a crypto art drop of several of his pieces that netted him over $3 million over one weekend of sales. Just last week, he crushed the record for the biggest crypto art sale to date. A one of one NFT of his art that resold on the secondary market for a cool 6.6 .6 million. It's a new avenue of expression, you know, so I can continue do, doing what I do. There's just a new platform for me to share it, you know, and the, and the possibilities of taking a painting, a mural, a sculpture, photograph, you know, photographing it or doing some motion graph, whatever it may be, the, the possibilities are endless. You could take your NFT and, and project it on the wall or put it on a screen in your house and people could come in and see it the same way people see a painting on your wall. They could take a photograph of that, same way it would take a photograph of your painting on the wall. Oh, I love that. You possess that file, that, that piece on the blockchain. The OG version, yeah. Exactly. So people have that, that question all the time. Well, what, what's to stop me from screenshotting this piece that you shared on Instagram? Well, no, nothing's stopping you from doing that but you have a, a, degra a degraded you know, image of, of something that was shared on you know, Instagram. You don't own anything. When you purchase an NFT, you own that file and it's on, it's on the blockchain. From that point on, it can be a, a, an investment, or maybe it's just because you really love the work and you understand the technology. Crypto art is not a genre or a style. It is a medium. It is a medium that encompasses endless styles and genres. It's not an age thing. You know, it's kind of a moment thing. It's where now this art that you've been sitting on, whether you're a musician, whether you're a digital artist, whether you're a photographer, whether you're a writer, all that content you've been holding now has value.
obviously Mark Zuckerberg within Facebook and, and Instagram is making gazillions of dollars with everybody's content because basically that's what's going on. Everyone's going in to see everybody else's content. And the reality is who's making a dollar on that? Not the content holders. It's a possibility this tentacle that the internet created called the blockchain, its roots are gonna go far and wide. So just how far have the blockchain and NFT technology tentacles spread? And what other tokens are up for grabs? From virtual land to music albums, this trend is growing faster than an AOL chat room the year before Y2K. We're sorry this story is no longer available to you. It has been tokenized by user GKQ6301LX and is no longer fungible. Please select another story.